Hey guys, one sec, just getting set up here. It's taking me a minute today. <laughs> making sure okay looks like we're good can you guys hear me okay there's a camera hey <laughs> how's it going yay hello hello okay can you guys see I think we're about to wrap up this girl finally yeah let's uh let's get her posed taco Tuesday Taco Tuesday. <laughs> Reminds me of the Lego movie. <laughs> the taco. All right. So, um, right before the stream, I kind of <laughs> kind of got sidetracked a little bit. But uh, I was just going through preparing her for posing. So, I'm just going through and naming everything and making sure they have subdivision levels. So... Yeah, that's what's going on. What's going on with you guys? Hey, Kyle's here. Sweet. Okay, I gotta, I'm just managing my sub tools here and renaming everything so it doesn't get stomped. Let's see. So your brush, your brush snaps back. Oh, uh, turn off lazy mouse. So hit L, that will turn off lazy mouse. Because they, uh, so in the new 4R8, they've added a thing that um, allows you to snap and continue a stroke. And that comes with lazy mouse. Correct me if I'm wrong, Kyle, but, so that means if you're, with, if you're in an area, like within a very close proximity of where you left off, it'll try and snap to where it was left off. So all you have to do is turn lazy mouse off and you'll, it'll work. Hope that answers your question. Hope I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay. Boot, whoops, not doot, boot detail. So I'm just going through and renaming the, or naming these. Let's check it out. Okay. This is, I'm gonna subdivide this down a couple kind of warbly on the bottom. I'm going to clean that up here in a minute. And then I'm turning, I'm making sure I'm turning dynamic subdivisions off of anything that has it and actually adding the detail. Boot. Can you guys hear me okay? Is it good? Oh, something else. Yeah, you know, you can go into Lazy Mouse. It's under Stroke. You can go into Lazy Mouse and you can play with the snap settings because that's what's actually doing it is the the snap. I think it's this Lazy Snap. Um, anyway, you can play play with these settings right here and uh, you know try and make it behave how you want it to. That might that might help you out. boots. Oh, let's see. Yep, this one has five subdivision levels. This one has seven. Let's see. See, there's things that I duplicated off the body that are still named body. Some weird number. So I'm just going to call this uh, belt end. Belt wrap. I don't know. I'm just making up names just as long as they're named different. Because if you go up and down in the uh, T-Pose Master plugin, and if you have any names named the same, then it won't work. So we gotta make sure that everything is unique. Buckle, belt, buckle. And this is chest, belt, buckle. Sorry, you guys have to go through the pain here. I'm almost done. If I could spell, buckle. I still can't spell. There we go. Chest, belt, buckle. 
this one is just the regular bell, yes. Um, you know what, Pixel I, I would love to. I would absolutely love to finish this today. It's been, I mean, you you guys have been super patient with me, and uh, I think you've you've have liked to watch me this long and see how long an actual model takes to do. But it's about time to stick a fork in it. It's done. Let's do it. Let's just get her posed tonight. Oh, she's already it's already called pants. What is this? This is the This is the cylinder in the back. Let's call it uh, squid tank. Squid tank, does that sound good? This is squid tank strap. Oh, this one has dynamic. Well, it's not even subdivided at all. So let's subdivide it a couple times. So you guys might have to help me out with this one. How do you make a live Boolean actually real? Do you guys know like how to say, okay, that's what I want. I want these holes in this thing. So how do I, is it under Boolean? Make Boolean mesh, I found it, I think. Is that gonna do it? It's gonna crash. Please don't crash. Okay. Union remeshing in progress. Sweet. Okay, somebody had a question, Build Buddy. Uh, how many interviews did you go through before you got your first job in the industry? Hey, Steve James, what's up, man? Um, the question, that answer is kind of tricky because that was the very first one I had. Uh-oh. Okay, stick with me. My computer is uh, trying to process and stream at the same time. So if I, if I pause, Hold on one second. <laughs> hey, what's up, Kushwa? Um, so the answer to that is my first job was at a small, very small studio in Utah called Sapphire. And this was back in 1997, 98, I think. And a friend of mine worked there. Um, and he helped me get an interview. Is this still working? Okay, hold on. I'm just checking this out. It didn't really, did it work? Does it make a new? Steve, you might have to help me out with this or somebody. <laughs> this, what did it do here? Okay. It still looks like it's not, oh well. I don't know what's going on with that thing. Um, I, I will need to append it back in. Okay, so it, may, it did make a new thing. Oof. That's my horrible, that's my bad one. It's all bad. Okay. E. Okay. I don't know what's going on with that. Anyway, <laughs> I'm just going to kind of ignore it for a minute. So uh, I haven't, I haven't really practiced using live Boolean too much. So bear with me here. Um, okay. So uh, to answer that question, to finish answering that question, I worked at Sapphire and I actually worked with Steve James, the guy who's in the stream. Um, and, uh, Steve, yeah, Steve, I don't know. When did you come on, Steve? Like 90, 1990, not 90, sorry, 2000. So I was there in 98 and I think you came on around 2000, something like that. So, uh, oh, 1999. Nice. Nice. Ashen Creatures. Hey, how's it going? So that first one I got, I got in because, um, I had just graduated from school. I went to the Art Institute of Seattle up in Seattle when it was brand new. Um, and then I got on at Sapphire. But the, the interesting job to tell you guys about is the one getting on at Avalanche, which was Disney at the time. Because that one was the most difficult to get onto. And, um, but I have some good advice for you guys. Uh, I tried to get onto that studio for about six years. In, you know, every single year, just applying, applying, trying to get on there. And uh, Steve James Hart, <laughs> that's true. You did put an art on the back, didn't you? <laughs> um, and I tried, cause, because I, I went through several different studios and then I, every time a studio would either shut down or move on or collapse or whatever, 
I would I would try to get on an avalanche. And I was what you call more of a technical artist. I wasn't I don't have paint like hand painting skills or t very good. I have drawing skills, but they're not stellar. You know, I'm a I'm a, I'm a better sculptor than a sketch artist. So the art director at the time was all about you know fine art and painting and he would hire all the people that were going through BYU at the time that were coming out of there with amazing paintings and then they would get taught the computer stuff. I mean this was back in you know like I said 1998, 1999 and um, the uh, so it, so they would kind of pass me up. Well what I finally decided to do was I really liked their style and I knew their lead concept artist at Avalanche. His name is uh, Todd Harris. Well, Todd Harris was there at the time. He's not there anymore. Um, but at the time, I was trying to get on an Avalanche, so I decided, hey, I'm gonna ask Todd if he has any concepts laying around that aren't being used for any game or anything like that, that I could use to make a model of to help impress the art director, the studio director at the time, which is still Jeff Bunker. So what I did was I asked for some art and he happily gave me some. Um, let me see if I can find it really quick. His name is, the character's name is Sirloin of Beef. <laughs> so it's pulling up all this meat. Hold on. Let me see if I can find it. Hang on. Oh, geez. I'm not finding it. It's on the web somewhere. Let me, let me look up Todd's name really fast. Bear with me, please. Okay, well, I found the concept, but not my model. Okay, I'm gonna put it in the Twitch stream here. So this is the character, and I modeled this in 3D Studio Max, just just a bust, just the top, and um, the the model ended up really impressing the the art director. So he finally said, "Hey, look, I want I want to hire you." So um, I ended up finally getting on there, and yeah so long story short if you're trying to get on at a certain company like a specific company that has a specific style you might want to take the time to gather up a piece of their concept I mean if you're gonna go for something like Blizzard Blizzard's concept art is everywhere so try and find some concept and model that concept for that studio and it does take a lot of time so you really you really want, you know, if you want to work at that specific studio, you're going to be spending some time. But if you want to impress them, then, you know, model their stuff because that's what they're going to hire you to do, right? So I hope that helps you guys. Um, okay, let me continue on with this. Boot tips. Okay, how far down did we get? Pants, squid tank. Okay, squid tank. Three, I'm going to subdivide this four times. Subdivide this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to merge all these together. Basically, I'm making all the same, all the subdivision levels the same count, same number. So they're all four. I guess I could merge them all together and then subdivide it, but I'm not going to do that. So let's see. So when I hit live boolean, did that, is that what this is? This, this made a new mesh out of everything. It's crazy. <laughs> I'm still trying to understand what, that's probably why it took so long because it was doing it to the entire character all at once instead of just like two parts. So that makes sense. That makes sense. I'm just gonna keep these, keep these little cylinders that I will delete out 
later. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to merge all these down, and then I'll break them apart later and do the live subdivision or live boolean afterwards. So let's see. Merge down. Merge down. And one more time. Okay, so if you keep all the same subdivision levels, you can see that it maintains them. So as long as the subdivision level count is the same, it's going to keep them around. Oh, turn off the eyeballs for the subtotals you don't want to include in, in the live boolean. Okay, got it, got it. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Blance. Oh, it looks like my my lid is inverted. Let's Let's grab that and flip it. Flip my normals. Flipping normals. Let's see, where is it? Display, properties, flip. Is it going to croak on me? What? No. Oh my gosh. It just crashed on me. <laughs> okay. I might have to... Yeah, I might have to go back. Okay, I'm, I'm going to close this and let's restart. Gosh dang it. Flipping normals. Sorry about that. I knew I was going too fast for comfort. Come on back. All right. So, da, da, da. Covered now 299, 100. Let's try this. Okay, let's see what it saved. Okay, cool. So I'm going to break that. I'm going to flip the normals on the lid first. before I merge it together. It's because it was merged together. That's why I had a hard time. So you guys still with me? I didn't kill the stream, did I? <laughs> okay. So this time I'm actually going to merge them all together and then subdivide them. So let's do that. None. That's not what I wanted to do. There we go. Merge down. Two, three, four. Now subdivide it up. That's better. Much you better. Okay. Hey, Death and Shadow, how's it going? Welcome to the stream. Yep, this is Pixelogic's channel. So Pixelogic is the maker of ZBrush, and uh, they stream ZBrush stuff all the time. When I'm, you can come back here when nobody is streaming, and you can see the see the schedule. I'm not sure. I think the schedule's also down below. Yeah. Okay. Pants. Let's rename this to Shaps. I don't know how you spell Shap. Chaps. <laughs> These knee pads. Souls, I already got it. Sword. I'm hoping to get her posed tonight. Three. Dynamic. I'm going to merge this down. Then this is the sword scabbard. Chaps, thanks. Chaps, chaps. How did I spell it? I did. Sweet. I actually did it. 
That was just a guess. Okay, let's see this one. Let's unhide these so you can see the. I have this giant, this giant sword scabbard. Let me save this. Uh, da -da. Ten, eleven. Okay. So this one has eight. None. Do I take pictures with fans? I love to take pictures. I have some really, really good ones. I love to take pictures with everyone. So are you going to be at the Zebra Summit then? I've even signed a couple of the toys. <laughs> some some Disney Infinity toys. So, uh, but I, you have to make sure it's one that I've done. I don't, I don't sign toys that I didn't work on. And Squid. I'm going to name this guy Squid. Squid. Except for I can't spell Squid. Squid. There we go. Sounds like I might be given a workshop, too. Um, yeah, we're working on it. I don't know how to spell Scabbard either, but that's my best shot. Okay. Let's see. I think we have everything. We're going to go through the tools and we'll it one by one again. Supply. So when I before I pose, I don't like to have anything dynamic. I like to have real subdivision levels in everything. And that's just because going back and forth between T pose, I like it just works better in my opinion. I don't know if it's it's true or not, but it seems to work better if everything has subdivision levels. So I'm just pushing the up arrow to go through these, each sub-tool. There's a lot of them. There's like 30-something. Okay, found one. Bootstraps. You can just hit Apply, and it'll put the dynamic on there. Turn dynamic subdivision levels into real ones. Almost there. Oh, found another one. Lower eyelids. Okay. Eyes. Okay, I think we're ready. Oh, one more thing I got to do is I need to add subdivision levels to the head because right now it's just a, a Dynamesh, I think, or I can't remember. Let's look at it. Um, I'm going to save this again. Solo that head. That'd be awesome to see you there, Blantz. How do you pass from Dynamesh to clean subdivision level? So you're about to see. So here is a Dynameshed mesh, right? Dynamesh. So what I want to do is I want to introduce the subdivision levels back in. Well, I want to introduce subdivision levels into this head. And how I do that is I will duplicate the subtool and then I will Z remesh this new subtool. So let's go to, let's close this down, Z remesher. And I like to start around with a head like this around 4,000. So hopefully we don't get a crash. What did your, what did your question? What was your question? How much was your working tablet? Oh, you said, you said Chad, so I thought you were talking to somebody else. Sorry. <laughs> so uh, how much was this? This uh, Cintiq, is that what you're asking about? A 
and eight ZBrush 4R8 is it's been stable for me other than that you know I just tried to flip normals but that would have broke ZBrush 4R7 I believe too so okay so here's the Z remeshed mesh and the, the to answer your question um, with about the Cintiq I think they run geez I don't I don't know what they are going for right now but I think around 2000 and then you get the base, like you buy the base if you want the base for another 400 bucks or something like that. They're not cheap. Not cheap, but I decided to uh, to save up and get one during Christmas last year. Okay, so here's the Ziri meshed mesh. Now it's, it's good enough to, uh, I'm gonna snap my high resolution to it. So I'm gonna hide everything except for Come on, except for, oh, uh, that's why, because it's got, let's try it again. Boop. There we go. So I want to, uh, I want to project the high to the low before I subdivide everything. Oh, they're on sale right now, since the new version. So that's what they always do. They always, whenever they come out with a new version, they put the older ones on sale. And this was last year's model. So the new one, how big is that new one? Like 30 something inches? I don't know. So I'm gonna project all. I want to project the poly paint. Oh, except for this, uh, this, since it has tattoos on the face, I used layers. So I'm gonna go back to this and turn my layers off. Those dang layers. Let's. Let's, uh, I'm gonna commit that layer. And then let's project again. Whenever you see black, it's usually, oh, dang it. It's usually from layers. So, okay, what? Let's fill this back in with a color. And why? The layer is gone. So it shouldn't be projecting black anymore. I'm gonna duplicate it and just see if I can project this new one. Okay, I'm projecting, you wanna project the high to this low. Okay, what is going on here? It looks like it projected some, there was some material or something on here. So let's clean that up. Let's fill this object, there we go. So that's one thing. Uh, oh, no worries, thanks for stopping by, Pixel. Um, okay, so I'm gonna back up. See, see these, weird, these weird polys here? Uh, that happened because either I accidentally painted material on here or it got projected on here. And how you reset a material on a surface is all you have to do is fill it with this flat color material. That's why I have it out here on my user interface. So if you just select flat color and then select your select any kind of a brush that has RGB and you can turn on M so you're just using the material channel and then fill your object with material and that will reset your material. So then if you choose skin shade four, it cleans that mess right up. And I wanna see if this one also has a material and how you can tell if it has material painted on it is to go to flat color and it looks like it does not. But I'm just, I'm gonna fill it just because I want to make sure there is not any material on there. And I'll switch it back to RGB because sometimes I forget and I, I will accidentally paint it and fill it in. So, okay, so let's project it again. Project all. Okay, that's better. Boom. Okay, so now I want to go up in subdivision levels. And I usually subdivide it to about, about anywhere between one and a half million and three million, anywhere in there, just enough to gather all the detail. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to project the high back onto the low again. But now we have enough detail that we're gonna hold the poly paint and the detail, like all the wrinkles and things or the pinches. So 
let's project all again and hopefully it doesn't turn black and uh, hopefully the stream doesn't die so this usually doesn't take too long unless you're projecting an entire character almost there okay so check that out so now what we have we have three but we have this one which, and it does not have any subdivision levels it is a dynamesh so that's the one I started with and now we have this one and this has five subdivision levels so now it's like it's the same mesh but now it has subdivision levels so that's that's how you do it now I can get rid of these other ones this one and this one and now I just have a head that has subdivision levels. So now it's ready for posing. Sweet. Sweet, sweet. Okay. So let's save it again. Let's get to posing. Posing, posing. I know you guys have been waiting for this. I've been waiting for this. So I'm not going to put the um, scabbard belt on here yet or these little daggers that are here let's load in that image the, the reference image and get it on here okay so here's our image let's get this bad boy posed okay so here's a moment of truth going to T-Pose Mesh. And what that does is that goes to the lowest subdivision level of every single subtool, and then it combines it into a brand new subtool. So you can then pose it. That's why I renamed everything, and I made sure everything had, it, had subdivision levels. And here is our low resolution mesh. We can check it out. Looks pretty good. This is a super simple pose, so it shouldn't take too long. Okay, so let's see. So when you project, you can't add more details or change the model. You, like after afterwards, or, so when you're, when you're in the process of projecting, you don't want to change the difference. It's kind of the process, you go through A to Z. So you, you duplicate it, then you Z remesh it, and then you add subdivision levels and then you reproject it. So while you're doing that, you do not want to add any detail. But after you're done, after you have the new model and you have new subdivision levels, sure, you can, you can sculpt on top of that all you want. Not a problem. So, okay, let's get busy. Um, so first off, what I usually like to do is I sculpt it like a like a tree, I guess is the best analogy I can use. What I usually do is I start from the stump, which in this case is her hip, hip box. And then I grow either down the roots of the tree or I grow up the trunk and then out until I finally reach the leaves, which are the fingers. So whenever I go to pose something, I'll, I'll start with the, the entire model, but which is the hip, the hip region. And then I'm going to hide everything that I do not want to affect right now. I don't want to pose the sword or the scabbard or the squid. Just her. Okay, so... And I'm, I don't want symmetry on because she's posed asymmetrically. And then this is the first time that I've posed anything with this new gizmo. So this will be an interesting, interesting little experiment here. Uh, looks like the... Uh, Looks like the, the cuffs on the boot are also flipped inside out as well as these, these details, but that's okay. We can just pretend that they look correct because I'm not going to, <laughs> going to attempt to flip them right now. I'll flip them later. Flipping normals. Okay, so what we can do here is we can center this gizmo in where the hips are, and then she's facing like this direction 
and I love this gizmo because I can just grab it. If I was using the transpose tool, if you recall, has a slight pinch function. Oh, I, I guess I'm not sure what you mean, Bristlebane, like a pinch, slight pinch function. So when I used to use the transpose line, I would, I would go like this and I would draw the transpose line out and then I would rotate it from here and I'd have to click rotate. But now that we have the gizmo, it's really cool because I don't have to look at it from top down. I can just grab this little, this little wheel, as it were, and rotate it into place. And she's kind of uh, rocked back. So I'm going to grab it and rock it back. And then maybe tilt her a little to the left. Let's see. Okay. And I'm just looking at this hip region right here and then looking at how, see her legs then come off of there and they go kind of down and back and she's leaning back into this pose. Okay. So we're going to try that. Now we're going to um, hide stuff and show stuff because we're going to be moving legs out. So if you think about the analogy of the tree, I'm going to uh, I'm going to start going down the roots and, and so I'm going to pose her legs first then I'll, then I'll work up the trunk and out to the leaves. So try bending something, let go and bend it back the other direction. Do it a few times and everything will be pinched down to a point. Hmm. I'll have to check that out. Okay, so let's uh, going to um, I'm going to grab these legs and mask them off. This is there's a lot of stuff going on here. So, oops. Okay. So what I'm going to do is just mask into this area here. So I think Bristlebane, what you're saying is if I if I bend it out then back then out then back are you saying like that looks like I, I have a little traveler there we go so I, I also like to blur the mask and then sharpen it back so I'm gonna blur it and then whoops and then sharpen it couple times. And what that does, is that just gives me a better transition between everything. See that? The transition's just a little bit better. And it's, I'm going to have to clean up down in here because it's, it's bringing too much along. See, it's, it's kind of pinched in there. So that's okay. Let's see. Okay. Now I'm going to unhide everything. And then I, what I want to do is, actually I'm going to leave this side. Fancy seeing, oh, oh yeah, great. I'm glad you're here. Glad you can catch me live. Thanks for watching. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is you can auto group things without there being issues. So I'm going to mask this. This is kind of a painful process here. Auto group. And then get rid of this, mask this. Do the same thing. And then once it's auto grouped and it's in separate pieces, then you don't have to worry about it anymore because it'll be auto grouped. It's kind of a, and I, I can do it without auto grouping when it gets apart, like just mask that piece. And now just mask these pieces. Looks like I missed part of the leg here. Okay. So everything is masked on this leg and I'm going to ignore the shield for now. I'll move it with the leg 
later, I believe. Maybe maybe I'll take it along for the ride. Let's see. Let's see what happens. Okay, so everything on this leg is masked. And what I'm going to do is invert that mask, grab the gizmo, and then pull the leg out. There's so much stuff on here. It's kind of <laughs> it's kind of a mess to pose. So uh, then I'm going to move this gizmo kind of in, more into the center of the leg. And then I want to aim it down the leg a little more. And then see if I can just twist it just a little bit. Even though legs twist really in this area, not, not in the hip area. But I'm going to fudge it just a little bit. Maybe too much. Okay. Now I'm just looking at this angle. I'm trying to get that angle correct here. It's kind of hard because you have to see past everything and just look at the leg that you're working on. Okay. Then I can clear that. Even There's even buckles in the way because what I usually do is I just grab the ankle like this and then move it into place. But it looks like it's okay. I grabbed... You have to be careful because... Gosh, stop popping. Okay. Because... Uh, now I grab this buckle. See this bottom of this buckle? And if I moved it, if I went to rotate this now, then that buckle will, will stretch and move with it. See? So I have to be careful. And what you can do is just hide everything except for these buckles and just make sure that it's masked off. Okay. Let's try that again. Oops, having a hard time popping around today. Let's see. I actually want to bring it forward, not back. And don't be afraid when you're posing. Do not be afraid to break it a little bit. And what I mean by break it is I rotate it in place and it shouldn't be able to move because normally if there were bones in it, like if it was rigged in Maya or something like that, you would not be able to necessarily move that foot around. But in, in here, you can totally cheat it, meaning I can grab move and I can fix that stretched ankle. See how that ankle was being stretched? Don't be afraid to move it. Don't be afraid. Another thing you can do to, to help you get things flat on the ground is you can pull your model down. See this line right here? This line indicates the gutter, but without turning the floor on and making a, a kind of a big mess, you can actually just bring your model down to the line and use it as a straight edge. Now I can rotate my foot along that straight edge and you can make sure it's straight. See? On the floor. Cheater. <laughs> Cheaty cheat face. Okay, let's do the other leg. Doesn't look too bad. And the, um, what you're trying to do when you're posing is uh, you're trying not to destroy your pieces and parts so you don't have to rebuild it or re-squish it into place, if that makes sense. So, <laughs> thanks, Dungeon Pug. I love your name too, Dungeon Pug. I can just see him like an adventure outfitted with all the gear. Okay, and since I'm posing the leg, I can hide all this other stuff that's kind of in the way. But I don't want to accidentally grab. Okay. Another thing you can do is you can just... So, the reason I grabbed pieces and parts one by one is because the legs were too close together for me to get a nice mask in there. I, I'm sure I would have grabbed parts on the opposite side. But now that we have some space in here, I can just mask this whole area off pretty, pretty close. I'm just trying to miss this belt here. And this is also another, another problem you might run into is see how the chaps are different density than the legs. So they're going to bend at a different rate. You know, so you just have to be careful when you, you might have to come back in there and clean that up. There's, 
you can't really avoid it because if you're going to blend the mask now, if I hold down control and tap, it's going to blend this at a different rate than it's going to blend this because they're different densities. Reminds me of Back to the Future, my density. <laughs> I mean my destiny. Okay, you want to check the check the rear, make sure it's selected kind of how you want. Okay, and then you can try bending it like that. And it doesn't matter if the other parts are hidden because you don't want to move them anyway. We just care about this. So let's pop that guy in there. Oops. And then we can reorient it. And always snap to the front of your camera. Um, Victor, yes and no. So how you can save your poses is in T-Pose Master. Let's see. Let's go check it out. See how there's this layer button? This says create a new layer per subtool. And what that will do is when you go back after you're done posing, when you go back, it will put every single part of your pose into a layer of each one of those subtools. So it's not the most, it's not the best way to save a pose, you know? Uh, so it's better just to save off a whole new subtool or a whole new Z tool. Uh, so right here, save as, and I just, so I basically just branch off right at this point from my, away from my uh, neutral pose to my toy pose or, you know, marketing pose, whatever, whatever you want to call this. We call it beauty shot or whatever. So it's not, you can't really save a pose like you think of in like say Maya or something like that. It's not really like that. You kind of just have to say, you know what, I'm, I'm breaking away right now. Okay, so it looks like we've got some rogue polys here. And I'm going to try something. Another trick you can do, and that is uh, control drag with your move or your gizmo selected. So I'm going to move it out of the way. Then if I hold down control and drag, I can mask down here. And what that does is that's going to mask down the uh, the, the loops of the leg. So then it's a, I have a better chance of getting down inside here where I can't, I can't reach because there's a, it's all pinched. So if I, if I control drag, it basically does this, right? Control drag, control drag. It, it puts a mask down the appendage. Get this out of the way and do it one more time. Okay. And then I can test it. See, that's much better much better. Okay. Let's invert that mask, unhide all, and go back through and hide these things just to get them out of the way. And I can I can do I can mask this off with it and then do my best to now let's hide this to mask the the chaps with it. It's about right there. There we go. Then invert that mask, and now we have a much better masking through this area. Okay? So let's try that now. See, it's less destructive that way. And that's what you want. And her leg is back. And I'm going to move it down. Hey, Simmering King. How do you say it? Simmering? Simmering King? <laughs> yeah, I moved I moved from Sunday nights to Tuesday nights. So same bat time, different bat channel. Or sorry. Yeah. I'm same I'm at the same time, just a different day. Okay. Now I'm definitely going to have to come back in here and clean this up because it's kind of a mess. But what I'm looking for is the flow, the flow running down the rib cage, around the tummy, and then down, down here. So you can kind of see that, that line all the way through there. So that's what I'm looking for. I'm not really paying attention to the crotch too much 
because it's a little it's a little off it's a little closer than I have it so I'll have to go in there and clean that up as well let's see a little bit more and I'm also wanting these these chaps to be straight across from each other so even though I'm moving it up and down I need to make sure that I'm not breaking it too much okay hey what's up Lewis welcome to the stream you guys that have never caught me streaming before actually usually drops by so we'll see if she drops by tonight yeah she's a I love watching her stuff she's great now I'm gonna do the same thing with this ankle you know another another guy I really like to watch is uh, Sumerian. Oh, Sumerian. Okay, great. Okay, sorry I butchered that. Um, another another person I really like to watch is uh, Michael Palfovich. And, uh, well, I guess three. There's three of them. Michael Palfovich, Joseph Drust, and uh, Paul Gabry because they're just so, like, packed full of knowledge. But it, you, you kind of have to be ready to sit through a learning experience when you listen to them stream because they're going to kind of just let it roll as you go and it's easy to miss stuff but I love listening to those guys too okay I'm doing that uh, doing that flattened trick again just flattening it out bring it down to this line use it as kind of a straight edge here okay not bad but you'll notice that her foot is aiming forward towards the camera and in the concept it's it's toe out and toe out so I need to go back in here and, and angle those out so let's try that but I need to figure out like where do I want to to, to tweak that where do I want to make it face out um, and how I decide that is where is the least amount of detail where are you going to notice the twist the least and it's usually up in this area right here usually <laughs> a brain a brain packer <laughs> yeah pack it in <laughs> hey it's ftz lol i don't know how to say your name but yay yeah i think our our tuesdays easier for people i think i think it might be sunday nights are kind of hard but uh, yeah, Raphael Rax Raxfiel, sweet. Thanks, guys. I'm so glad you guys are uh, catching me. It's really cool. Oh, Co the Conan novels. I have not read those. I played the Conan MMO for a little while. <laughs> that was kind of a train wreck. <laughs> Sorry if any of you worked on that. <laughs> oh, I should watch my watch my tongue. No, they know it's it was it's kind of rough. MMOs are rough. So once again, I'm just kind of angling this gizmo to be down the length of the leg and kind of in the center of that mass right there. So hopefully, I can then grab this and twist it. But I need more. I need my masking to be smooth or uh, blended out more. And how I'm doing that is I'm holding down Control. I'm just tapping on the surface and then inverting it and tapping on the surface. And what that's doing is stretching that blend across the top and across the bottom. So I'm going to try that again. Then when it twists, it doesn't move, it doesn't pinch across the surface so much. Then, let's see, then I might just do the rest in that in the ankle down there. I may have to redraw some of those some of those lines that I put in her leg because those those lines will definitely let you see that I've twisted it in that area. So um let's see, let me catch up. Oh, milk baths. <laughs> nice name. Milk baths. Um my brushes are a godsend. Thank you so much. I really appreciate the feedback. Um, if any of you guys want to use the brushes that I have, see all these brushes down here? Not all of them, but a majority of them. You can go get those on my website, which is 3dcharacterworkshop.com. 
and I have yet to update those to 4R8, but the brushes will work with 4R8, so if you want to go grab them. And um, I also do a course, I also teach a course, so that will get you on the newsletter for my course, which enrollment is currently closed for, but I'm hoping to open it really, really soon. So you'll get on the newsletter for that and you'll be notified when that comes out. So um, let's see. And I also give away this user interface and um, and my ruler file. I have a ruler file that helps you um, go back and forth between programs like Maya and other things and it helps you with 3D printing. So there's videos on my website you can watch and I explain how each one of them works. So the layout is missing the gizmo. Like I said, I have not updated it for 4R8 yet. This is my 4R8 user interface that I will be updating and giving that away very, very soon. So if you get on my newsletter, you'll get it probably within the week, I'm hoping. And uh, then you can just go grab it and this is it. So it does have the gizmo, it does have live Boolean, and I have updated the menus to include all the stuff that is new, hopefully. So um, anyway, that's, that's coming very soon. But until then, you can use, you can just go grab the brushes if you want, or you can wait. <laughs> So will the brushes work on the core version? They will not, unfortunately. Uh, core is pretty locked down tight. Um, so, but it, the core does come with some primitive brushes and really cool things in there. So uh, you don't really necessarily need this stuff with core uh, because it already has like a pinch brush and it comes with Damien Standard. This is just my version of Damien Standard, um, but it comes with brushes that are very similar. So you shouldn't, you shouldn't feel too bad. Okay. So let's get back to this really quick. Let me know if you have any questions about that stuff. Oops, I need to clear the mask first. And you'll notice that I tend to mask something off first and then invert the mask. I don't, see, since I'm just gonna be manipulating this foot down here, I don't do, I don't do this, right? That's not what I do. Instead, I do this and then invert it after the save project happens. <laughs> okay, like that. That's much easier and I don't have to zoom out to g grab everything. Let's see. I'm just making sure that I'm, whoops, there we go. Oh. There we go. I just want to make sure that this buckle isn't part of that group. Um, have I figured out how much the course will be when I open it back up? Um, it will be similar price to when I launched it the first time. So I'm not, I'm not raising the price yet. So a lot of people have said it's, it's an extremely good value. So I hope, I hope that's the case. Most people feel that way which makes me happy. So I'm going to bend this out just a little bit more and then rotate it in. Um, I keep adding stuff all the time. I, I just recorded, um, I just recorded four new lessons today. And there is one more that I want to do that covers the live Boolean as soon as I teach it to myself. So, um, Rabbit, I don't really like to announce how much it costs in the stream because it, you know, people might watch it later and the price might change. So, uh, I just say, just, just kind of get on the newsletter and you'll, you can go, th go through and watch the, the pitch as it were and check it out. Okay. So now see the issue I'm having the left leg is longer than the, or the left leg shorter than the right leg because I moved it down too much and moved it around too much. So now how do you fix that? Well, you cheat it. Cheaty, cheaty, cheaty meat cheaterson. So let's, um, let's undo this and we're gonna shorten this guy up. Whoops, meant to. Um, so, okay. Yeah, I, can, I don't really, <laughs> I don't really want to say it's not, it's not a cheap gum road. 
but it's not like it's it's what you would typically find for courses like at uh, URC and Mold 3D and stuff like that. So it's about it's about around the same price. Okay, so I'm gonna shorten this guy up. Once again, I can put it down on this line. It looks like I didn't get the foot quite flat, so I think that is enough. And I'm looking at the knees across from each other. Stuff like that. There we go. Oh, Pixel Dread. Okay, 5 a.m. Oh, boy. Well, I'm going to be streaming every, every Tuesday from 8 to 11 uh, Pacific time, or I guess it's 7, 7 to 10 Pacific time, which is... California time, yeah. Um, it's 8 to 11 my time, which is in Utah, so. Oh. Yes. So, about, uh, hold on a second. Let me see. Let me, let me make sure I'm answering all the questions. Uh, no, no, no. Please wait a little to open the workshop again. Just missed the last one. You need to buy a few gears business, but I'm dying to get in so bad. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, so I would say within the next three or four weeks-ish, and then it'll be open. Uh, the enrollment, I typically open for about a week. So if, if that's the timing that you're looking for. Uh, let's see. So you have to get some sleep. Um, I have a huge problem posing my characters. I find it difficult to get a dynamic pose on the screen like I would when doing a traditional sculpture. Uh, okay, something about a flat screen makes it hard. I totally get I, I totally get where you're coming from. So in your situation, and I learned this from um, I, Irene Matar. She works for a Disney Feature right now. She's one of the, the character artists there. And she came out to Disney Interactive to help us quite a bit she shared her knowledge and it was it was great so uh, one of the things she showed me was how you can make a temporary like kind of a one-off model and you can just like just play with it and try to it doesn't matter if you break it or anything like that just use it as a just a temporary temporary tool you're gonna play with so let me let me show you really quick what I'm talking about Okay, I'm gonna unhide these things and hide the sword and the squid. Okay, so what I'm talking about is, say you're trying to to reach a dynamic pose, right? So like for Spider-Man, when the Spider-Man pose that we did for Disney Infinity, he's down on that rock, his, his back arm's way in the air, and he's got this really crazy bendy dynamic pose. So to get that pose, what we did was we used the move brush and we used it very big. And what you can do is come in here and and push it around like this. And it doesn't matter if you stretch things weird or you know break it. You're just looking at the silhouette, you're just looking at the pose, and you're just temporarily moving stuff around while you can find that dynamic pose. You know, like say say you wanted to see what it would look like with the hips pushed out a little further. So you can just grab it and then see that line of action now even though she's all skewed and bent and broken the the line of action is there so then what you can do after you have that pose model is you can save that say as an obj just export it as an obj just right here export then next time when you pose it for real you can match your pose you can import it right here you can append it or you what i usually do is i append a star so I grab a star and it makes a new star right here. And then I'll go import and I'll go grab that OBJ, whatever OBJ that I made, and it will put that pose in this subtool right here. Then what I can do is I can use this transparent mode, okay, and say pretend the star was the was the the jinked up pose that's all it's it's cool but it's all squished and weird but now you want to actually try to match the pose to it, then you can, you can use this transparency mode to match this new pose 
to it. And what we would do too is we would export a low resolution model like this and we would give it to our rigging department and they would rig it up really quickly in Maya, like really crappily, and then they would hand it off to some of the animators or some of the concept artists and they would try all these dynamic poses with an actual rig. And then what we could do is we could grab that, rip the rig out of it after it's posed, export it as an OBJ, import it this exact same way, put it on a separate subtool. You can use transparency or not just to match it to that pose. Then as long as you delete this pose after the fact, you get it out of there, then your T pose to sub T will work going back up to your high resolution mesh. So that's, um, that's a really cool method to just push your poses into dynamic poses. Because when she's like this and you're just trying to rigidly move everything carefully and not break everything, then you're not really paying attention to that dynamic pose as much. But since this pose that I'm working on right now isn't that dynamic, she's basically just standing there with a sword and her hand on her hip, I'm, I'm not too concerned about how dynamic it is. But I hope, I hope that helps. And uh, yeah, just get in there and start pushing and pulling her around. So let's see, okay. Pixel Dread, thank you very much. Works for me over here in New Zealand, time-wise. Still daylight, oh, I wanna to get to New Zealand so bad. I wanna check out, I wanna check out the Hobbit homes. <laughs> when you move parts, it destroys other parts of the mesh. Yeah, that's, it's super, super finicky. Oh, Dungeon Pug, back in a few. <laughs> the Battle Pugs. Just wanted to thank you for all the useful tidbits you share on these streams. Absolutely my pleasure. Really getting over the hump and really starting to get ZBrush. That's great. Super cool. Hey, what's up, my crazy ZBrush? Welcome to the stream. I'd like to use matching ZSphere model to tinker with poses. Oh, somebody asked me about ZSphere rigging. Um, I do not use it because it's very, very unpredictable. And there's no way I can control the skin weighting on the rig. So other than putting in more Z-spheres and it's just a pain to do that. I, so I'd just rather do it this way. It's just much, much quicker. Um, I did a dragon a long time ago and I rigged it with Z-spheres and it was fun because of the way it moved, but I could never use it in production, not, not a serious pose production. But so I hope that answers your question. Yeah. Yeah, give, give that pose, that way to pose, a, it, it's really cool. I like it a lot. To use a matching Z-sphere model to tinker with poses, you can do that, you know, but like I said, I, I, I it's just personal. Some people like it, but me personally, it's just, it doesn't, I don't have enough control because I get pretty detailed with my poses and sometimes the, the Z-sphere rig just kind of gets out of control something gets left behind or something gets too squishy or noodly. I don't know. I just, I, I'm just not a fan, but a lot of people really like it. So to each their own. Thanks rabid monkey. Glad you're here, man. Okay. Let's, uh, let's finish out this foot. Okay. Even though I grabbed that other buckle, I don't care. I'm gonna, I can, I can live with tweaking that just a little bit. There we go. Now she's flat-footed. Flat-footed both feet. I could probably tweak this one just a little bit. I, I do have to say I love this new gizmo. Gizmo. Okay. Like, okay, for example, Sumerian King, I, w I was just going to show you, her, her legs are very flat and on a straight plane, and I, I kind of want to kick them back a little bit. I'm not going to do it right now, but what I could do is, let me hide this leg shield here. What I could do is just kind of uh, mask this area off blend it and then just just kind of work it back in space 
just to kind of get that that line of action a little more dynamic you know what I'm saying but what that does is that you know that messes up the feet again so um, I won't do that right now but that's how I would do it I might do it later in the future I could also hide all these pieces so I don't accidentally grab the arms and all the bits and, and tweak them so I'm just gonna hide them then I can do what I was showing you and I just want to grab these legs and push them forward a little bit in space so it is it is breaking them but it's making them a little more kind of an S curve dynamic you know and you can start to clean this stuff up in the T pose master to make sure my spotlight projections off and I need to turn down my Z intensity I just kind of clean this up see how it lost some volume and stuff here and you can use the pinch brush to come back in here I'm gonna turn the intensity down and just kind of pinch this back into shape how it was inflate this a little bit and then see this this piece is all messed up well here just this piece there we go so you can you can clean this stuff up a little bit in the in the teep in the the pose but it's kind of it can be dangerous too because see these details that I have I mean you can barely see them they're just little nicks if I start to try and clean that up too much you might go back to your high-resolution mesh and and find that your your lines are all kind of messed up and you will have to redraw them which is okay there's a, you you have to do that more more often than not so okay zigzag you didn't mean rigging just a separate z-sphere model I only use z-sphere rigging to bend 3d fiber oh yeah 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 okay for sure so yeah I'm just <laughs> I am not a fan of the rigging but I can see like just creating some kind of a, a z-sphere model as reference yeah that's a good idea too and you know you can also do like you know just a drawing in the background and try to match that it's not it's not that big a deal So I'm just smoothing this out a little bit. I'll probably have to go back and clean it up later. But I'm pretty happy with these legs now. If I'm if I'm looking at this and looking at this, it's not it's not too scary. So now let's work our way up the trunk. What time we got here? Nine. Okay, that's not bad. I want to straighten her up a little bit through here, and she's got so much going on in this torso. That it's tricky that's one thing I didn't do by the way is you can notice with this belt being inside out and this the the boot cuffs being inside out I didn't go through every single sub tool to make sure that it was flipped you know so no big deal that doesn't mean it won't work okay so what I'm going to do now is I'm just wanting to affect from from like this area up so I'm going to I'm going to start with the with the belly and then go up from there so I'm going to hide everything that that does not affect okay so let's see yeah, I'm going to invert that and then I want to unmask all this stuff and make sure I'm gonna mask all this stuff there like that this is this is all about a it's kind of a puzzle game of masking right it's like okay how can I get that unmasked and masked and da 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 so let's see <laughs> what what 
What kind of a friend? That's not a friend. Go tell him to pound sand, man. What does he know? I'm I'm 44. I'm just getting started. I've just started. Jeez. Just let let people like that pour pour the gas into your tank and get you going, man. So you can prove them wrong. That's what you use those comments for. Okay. Because I still want her leaning back, but not too much. Because then she'll look, look stiff. Let's see. <laughs> Piano keys. Thanks, right? 32. He's telling you you're too old. Yeah. Give him the finger for me, would you? <laughs> Jeez. Jeez. Okay. Straighten her up just a bit. So what I'm looking at right now is this, I'm looking at this negative space between her arm and her inside here and this arm. And if it's going to create too much of a gap in here and here, because all I'm going to have to do is twist this arm to make her hold that sword. And then her head will change when I lean it forward and make her look forward. So let's see. That's pretty good. I'm liking that. Let's see. Yeah, man, it's so, a lot of people get get started later. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Focus. <laughs> there you go, Samaritan King. There you go. Shut up. <laughs> nice. Yeah, sometimes, you know, sometimes that's uh it just takes that level of maturity, shall we say? <laughs> Not like I'm mature or anything, but all right, we're gonna we're gonna push this head down and forward. So we're gonna hide all the pieces and the parts. Whoop. And then we got the headless, the headless lady. Let's mask all this. Invert. Oh, let's see. Okay, I'm going to have to do the trick, the drag down the neck trick to get behind her head like this. Okay, now I want to unmask all this. Like I said, it's a puzzle. Okay. And then I'm going to blur that mask up her neck. Invert. And then lean her head forward I'm liking the gizmo guys gizmo for the win Kyle tell all those people at Pixelogic I like the gizmo <laughs> like they'll care they're like yeah we know okay let's see I don't want to bring it down too much Tilt it like this. You know, the reason I like this gizmo so much is because I can rotate it from the front right here. If I had to do that with the transpose tool, I'd have to turn it to the side and rotate it. But with this, I can grab this little ring and just grab, just move it up. It's super nice. Okay. Let's tilt it down more I'm looking at how much hair is showing in the back of her how much is coming out I'm looking at the side profile of her head because I've snapped it 
to the front view. So I want her cheek resting right on that collar. And then I want her chin going down and being hidden. This sword has to go. Get out of here, sword. Okay. And then how much of her chin is coming out and how much is being hidden. Looks like I'm going to have to pull this collar up much higher in the back it's, it, so it can go up and around the back of her neck. Let's see. Yep. Gizmo. Every, not just Maya, it's every other program before ZBrush or even after ZBrush has a gizmo. So all of them, all the, all of them, you come in, it's great. Let's see, never had a problem with transpose. Honestly, piano keys, I love the transpose tool. I do, I, I adore it. I've used it for the past, uh, what, six, seven years? And I've gotten used to it. And the only problem I have with the transpose tool is that you have to draw it over and over and over and you have to get your ca your your camera angle at certain views in order to rotate it at a certain angle. That's the only beef that I really have with the transpose tool. Other than that, I absolutely love it. It's like a Swiss army knife of tools, everything in one. I love it. But uh, honestly, they've done a phenomenal job with the gizmo. And it's I'm liking it. I didn't I didn't know that I would. I was it was taking me some time to get used to but I, I like it a lot. I really do. Let's see. Uh, so does ZBrush when it first started. So I also find that people coming in from, coming into ZBrush fresh have a much easier time learning ZBrush than people coming in from another box modeling program like Maya or 3D Studio Max because they're expecting the program to act a certain way. And when it doesn't, they get frustrated. But if you're coming in from, say, traditional sculpting into this, you don't, you don't know what it's not doing like the other programs or not. So you don't care and you can get into it much easier. I've, I've, I've taught a lot of people and that seems to be a common thing is that if you have never used a 3D program before, it's a little easier to learn ZBrush. So. Um, the ZBrush camera is a little awkward and there's a reason it's because um, it's this is not a true 3D environment. This is a two and a half D environment. This is this is pixels with depth. So right now this is not 3D. It's only 3D when I rotate it like this. That's and that's why back back when there was ZBrush 2.0, uh, 3.0, sometimes when you have a very very dense model and you go to rotate it I'd be listening to music and it would ping my CPU whenever I rotated it because it was accessing all the math it's like oh we gotta rotate okay and that's when it becomes 3D that is why you could get millions and millions of polys because it's not a 3D program like other 3D programs it's the way it works is different that's why sometimes when you're sculpting on the edge of a of an object out here and you move it around, sometimes you'll get these like these black art artifacts. And the reason you get those is because it's it's drawing the background on top of it and it's fighting with the background. And those go away the second you rotate it, because it's two and a half D. So the the that's why the the perspective, this perspective camera, this is not a real camera, it's not real perspective, it's actually warping your model in space. And when you're scaling your model or when you're zooming in and out like this, you're not actually zooming. It's actually scaling the model up and down. I'm, <laughs> I probably shouldn't be telling you guys this, but because it's like, it's kind of like seeing behind the curtain a little bit, <laughs> but, but that's kind of, and that's, that's, that's just fine. That's how it works. You know, they, they figured it out. They figured out how to push a million polys. The transpose line has two ways of bending. When the line is before the joint or after, does the gizmo rec replicate that? Zigzag, the only way it does replicate that is with a deformer. And the deformers are up in this gear right here. So you get this bend arc and this bend curve. It does not work like the transpose bend. It does not work like that, but it's better actually. But it takes a few more steps, but you have more control. So you could uh, play with that. I haven't played with it too much, but the deformer, I mean, it has like, it has a, a FFD, I think it's called, the 
like a, a mesh frame that you can bend around your objects. It's super cool. But I just haven't I haven't got into it yet. So let's get back to this. I think we're pretty good. Mm. I'm just looking at how close this eye is sitting to the edge here. I'm looking at how much of the eye you can see here, the space between the nose and the cheek, how far it goes down. I, like I said, I am going to have to raise that color. I'll probably raise it now. But yeah, 4R8. If you don't have 4R8, you're complete. You gotta, you gotta go get it, man. It's so good. It's very good. Even the live boolean stuff alone is really good. The gizmo, all that stuff. Very good. Okay. So now I'm like I'm trying to look past the arms, and I'm just looking at the flow through the model and the stance, because she's standing quite strongly, like mount, you know, grounded. I guess the word is very grounded. And of course, my model has wider hips and a wider rib cage. This this concept is quite she's a lot narrower and she has a larger head. So I might make her head larger now because I like the larger head. But let's uh let's pull this collar up first. Let's see. Yep, stylus stylus for the win. Stylus, stylus. Just, every time I use move, I just use little tiny movements. Little tiny. Let's turn on topological. And that has to go way up, doesn't it? Maybe. I like that. Okay. Um, okay, let's see. I don't know. <laughs> Caliber Elk, I don't know why I didn't allow you to say that, but um, are those clothes UV wrapped? They're not. Uh, this, this is not a game model. This is not for film. I will make the game model after this, and uh, I'll make a low resolution mesh, and those that mesh will be UV mapped. I don't I don't I do not currently have UVs on this. This is meant for printing and rendering is all. For now, anyway. Um I will not because I use different programs and this is Pixelogic's channel. So I I I might on my own channel but not on here. Let's see. What did I miss? Did I miss anything? Uh, da, 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 da. Oh yeah, Chris, totally. It's it you yeah, there's some things in here that'll drive you mad for sure. Especially like when you go to subdivide an object, if you bring your object in from another program like an OBJ or something, and you go to subdivide your object and it actually shrinks your low resolution mesh, that, that can get maddening, especially if you want to keep your low resolution mesh in exactly the spot that it is. But ZBrush just doesn't work that way. As soon as you subdivide something, it'll shrink it a little bit. So you just have to embrace it. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. I think I'm caught up. All right, let's do, uh, mm, oh, I was going to make the head a little bigger. Let's do that. It's, it's sort of revealing when you start hiding all your stuff and you can see how, how wonky some of your geometry is. Okay, let's see. I want to get higher up in the neck, actually. Let's move this. There we go. You know what I'm noticing? Did you guys just see what, what, what it just did? Look, it masked everything. How in the world is it doing that? 
because normally it would only mask the, the pink, the head, but it just included everything. Whoa, that is new. That's brand new. So this screen is uh, the 27. So it's a Cintiq 27. So Kyle, are you still in here? Kyle. <laughs> Carl. He's going to punch me in the face when he sees me at the Zebra Summit. Um, the resolution? Mm, let me see. Let's see, let's see. Yes, this screen is extreme. It's way expensive because you can draw on it. Change resolution. Uh, let's see. It is two two thousand five hundred and sixty by fourteen forty. That's the resolution of it. <laughs> Imagine using this for rigging. Uh, Blands, w was I in gizmo mode? Yes, I was. I gotta try that again. I gotta try that. I gotta see that again. See if I wasn't up in the night like crazy person. Okay, you guys. Here we go. I'm trying it again. Look at that. It did it. It did it. Well, the the angle of my camera might might be throwing it off a little bit. Let me see. I'm gonna grab this for a second. Can you see it better? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, you can see it on Wacom's website. It's just their their 27 inch. Let me see. I want to make sure I'm not messing up my camera too bad. Okay. Still looks white. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Caliber, let me see. What was your question? Yeah, I was in, so Bland's really quick. Yes, I was. It does the masking by polygroups. Yeah, it's crazy. It was really, really cool. Yes, just click on the polygroup you want and it'll mask everything else. That's super, super cool. That means I don't have to hide as much. Okay, Caliber Elk, let's see. Let's say I'm working on a high poly shirt model and I want to unwrap it. Do I need to UV the inside of the shirt too or just unwrap one side and put a shell modifier on the shirt. Um, you're, well, the what you're asking me is, um, I do get what you mean, and I do all that stuff in a different program. Like I U, do UVs in a different program. Um, I, I add the shell, I, I do add the shell in here. But yes, I, you need to put UVs on your entire game resolution character. You don't just put some on one part and not on the other. So you would actually, UV the inside of your shirt and the outside of your shirt, but you put a seam typically around the edge of the shirt and do it in two, two unwrapped pieces. So I hope that answers your question. Yes, Chris, that is insane. The masking trick is insane. That's a, that's a huge addition. So moon and yeah, I, I saved up for this for a long time, a long time. I had the 24 inch first. So I saved up enough pennies to, to buy that. And then I sold it to a friend of mine and it gave me enough with a couple extra hundred dollars to buy this one, so. Oh, it's, it doesn't matter if it's a film model or a game model, it's, the idea is the same. You, you, unless you're working in like Disney's P-Tex that doesn't need UVs, you have to UV everything, so. Um, speaking of which, you should watch uh, Sergey Caliber. He is a rigger at and a modeler at Disney Feature, and he is just starting to stream. So I I don't know if he'll be streaming on Pixelogic's web website, but his uh, he'll be he'll be streaming. He has started. So if you're interested in that kind of stuff, go just check him out. So if there's no asymmetrical details, you can always 
just UV one half and mirror across. That's more piano keys. That is more for gaming, especially like for mobile and stuff like that. That's if you want if you want to save some of your resolution, like your map detail. Yeah. So it does not make sense to have thickness on the entire thing unless it has tons of holes in it. Yeah, you only want thickness where you actually where you're actually going to see it. And with a film model, they typically just do like a cloth simulation with a cloth mesh. And uh, with film, they can do that because it's rendered. So you just render it out and do a cloth simulation. But for games, it's different. So okay, I need to get to this here. You guys are asking some good questions though tonight. Thank you very much. Okay, gonna invert this and invert, hide this, and then grow the head. I also like, with the transpose tool, I'm always hitting move or rotate or scale, like the, the hotkeys. With the gizmo, I just have to have the gizmo showing and it does everything within the gizmo. I don't have to mess with it. So I can do a, a scale in the head right here. Okay. I think I like that. Let's try some perspective. Yeah, okay. Let's do that. Yeah, I Paula, that's some good stuff. Yeah, not not really. Okay. So on this arm, I'm going to hide the shield for a minute. And then I want to rotate it out so it's actually um, going to be holding the sword. So I'm going to mask all this off. Oh, uh, his name is, it's kind of hard to pronounce. Let's see, Sir, it's S-E-R-G-I, Kabbaler. So let me, I'll just put a, I'll put a link to his, to his site in here. Yep, there you go. So that's not a link to his, his Twitch stream, that's just a link to his, his website. Okay, I'm gonna turn this light down a little bit. All right, it's kind of blowing out a little bit. Okay. Let's see, uh, Red Neff, let's see, hey, Love got a question. I have a jumpsuit I did on Marvelous, exported over to ZBrush, then to 3D Studio Max for Retopo, but the collar gives a lot of problems when I create the shell. Project normal. Um, so what I typically do if you have something that has two sides is I will, I will make it a single plane so it does not have thickness like a cape or a jumpsuit, something like that, that does not have thickness. And I will make it the cleanest possible mesh I can when it's just single sided. And I will not add the thickness until the very, very, very end. And sometimes I'll even delete it and then add it again because I will find some problems with it. Like when I extrude it, it'll like these collars and things, it'll like extrude in on itself. And so I'll have to go back and tweak some of that. And what I'll do is I'll just, make the surface its own face and then I'll delete everything so it's just a single surface again and then I'll do the edits and then I'll I'll fix it I'll just adjust it marvelous designer will create create some crazy what I call knots in the mesh like like just and you have to go through inside zbrush with a single plane and just use the smooth tool and just kind of smooth it and it'll kind of untangle those knots and you can get it smooth and and better so I hope I hope that helps you. <laughs> Marvelous can, can be uh, painful sometimes. 
I haven't used it too much, just on a couple projects. And on those projects, other people have given me the, the, cl the cloth, and then I've had to undo those knots. So I have experience with that. Okay. So I'm going to twist this arm. Whoops, not like that. I want to get the gizmo inside the volume of it. And once again, point it down the arm like so. And then I want to blend this mask down more. Because just like at the leg, the more you blend it, the less you'll notice the twist. Okay, so let's let's bend this arm out. There we go. And let's see. Now I want to take that arm back in space. Oh, this, sh okay. Uh, you mean the shell for the projection? Oh, like the envelope for baking the maps and not a physical shell in the model. You want to keep the mesh no thickness, just as a panel. So let me read the other one again. So uh, I would actually bake that into two parts. So I would I would break the collar off of the rest. Uh, so so then the the envelope won't like overlap itself, and then you'll have to stitch those maps back together and stitch the the stuff back together. There's not really a way around it. It's gonna if you're if your model is interpenetrating itself or getting too close to itself, you need to either put put the parts into separate baking groups or split them off completely apart. If so like for example, see this see this kind of lapel thing on the front of her jacket? I did that on purpose because if I was to try to bake this map with this vest thing, there'd be no way it would it would it would make a mess essentially. So what I do is I bake the maps on this part separately. That way they don't collide with each other. So does that does that answer your question better? I hope so. Okay, so I want to move this arm back in space. So I'm going to unmask this area. I need a drink. Hmm. Yay, I'm glad. I'm glad I, I understood what you're trying to ask me. Sorry about that. Okay, let's move this. Back in space. And then bend this elbow forward. Now elbows are kind of tricky because normally on a joint like a shoulder, I'll blend it. I'll blend the mask out on both sides, but with an elbow, I'll typically just leave it pretty crisp because what that'll do is that'll start to create that that bend or that uh, this right here, the seam between the, the upper and lower arm. And it'll start to give you kind of a crispy elbow, but you will have to go back in there and fix it. Of course, there's always some cleanup involved, but See, it starts to make that elbow and it starts to make that bend. But I need to look at it from the front to see how far to take it. So I think I took it too far. So it's more like, more like this. And now I, I can tell that I have this part of her arm is up too high. So. So l like right here, I'll blend that really quick. And then I'll push this down. So I feel though that if I if I bring her arm down, the pose does not feel as balanced. So I'm gonna push it just a bit. Okay. And I want to push it out. The 
Arminga, Arminga, what, <laughs> Arm, what are you calling it? The Arm Gina, Arm Gina, as we, <laughs> I don't even want to, I don't even want to attempt that word, it sounded too much like something else. <laughs> oh boy. So, okay. This, it, it did it again. Yeah, I, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> I'm not going to attempt it. Okay. Get me, you're going to get me in trouble. <laughs> All right. Yeah, you're talking. <laughs> now you got me laughing. I'm not going to be able to stop. Knock it off. All right. And I expect that on like a Friday or a Saturday, but not a Tuesday. <laughs> So how about the normals? Should you flip them or keep them the way they are? Ah, uh, yeah, you should keep them. Keep them the way they are. You want your normals to be the way they're going to be in the final, the final project. Otherwise, it's going to be your maps will get messed up. Okay. Blands. No, Blands. Here comes Blands from the left. <laughs> Come on, you guys. Oh. You got to save this stuff for my personal stream. I've been in this. I, gotta, I, I don't stream on my own channel enough. I haven't for a long time. I better start. Okay, let's hide, unhide that shield and bend it around. All right, I don't think I'm going to be able to bend it clear around like it is in the concept. I'm just going to have to get it as close as I can without it because it's behind this collar behind this collar it's kind of it's almost there but then it starts cutting into to the side of her rib cage huh <laughs> so so uh, I, I don't want to take it too too far in there There we go. It's kind of it's kind of big. Let's make it smaller. Not too small. I think it's just the the straps are too too far down there. Let's shorten those guys up. Messing them up. All right. Let's get that sword in their hand. I'm gonna have to make that make that scabbard a lot smaller here. So a lot of this stuff, you don't know, like the proportions and the size, how big things are until you actually get them into place. There's a lot of times that you'll, you'll build something and you'll, you'll notice that you're like, uh, that isn't going to work. <laughs> so then you always have to go back in and make sure you get it into your T pose because like I said I'm branching this off this pose off so I have to kind of recall everything that I've done when I'm posing it I have to remember to to shrink the scabbard back down I have to remember to you know make her head larger so they actually match so the T pose the neutral pose matches this new pose
So right now I'm just kind of looking at the sword angle and how tall it is and trying to decide if I want it at that angle. There we go. Because I also want it to, I want it to end right at, you know, how you would actually hold a sword at the end without janking up the perspective. Jank is a word. See if I if I turn it like it should be angled down her arm like so, then the perspective of the blade kind of goes away. Which is okay. I have to be okay with that. Then you also want the hilt or the handle. Let me move this scabbard. So you want you want this handle to be perpendicular to the the arm coming down, right? Like this. You want to make her look like she's actually holding it and it's not just part of the the concept design, you know what I'm saying? Hey Sonic Thunder, how's it going? Welcome to the stream. Oh, thank you very much. So this is the concept. This concept I did not do. I'm not responsible for this. I'm just doing the model based on this concept. And the concept was done by uh, jo Johannes Helgeson. If you look him up on ArtStation, you can find all of his amazing artwork, which he just barely did a brand new one that is uh, like a husband and wife custom cake topper. And uh, it is, it's so good. It's so good. That guy... He's on a different level, I swear. <laughs> okay, let's see. I'm gonna turn off wireframe, make it gray, and I'm gonna start looking at it from more angles than just this one. You can also tell if it's a good pose, if it still looks good when it's really small. So I'm not looking at her left arm, I'm just looking at the composition and looking at it from different angles. So from this angle, her, it feels like to me her leg is on too much of a plane, like the same plane as the other leg, which it is in the concept, but I think I could possibly push that left leg back in space and make the pose a little more, more dynamic from the side because this is a three-dimensional object so you you need to make it look good from from all sides not just from the concept angle let's see so the last thing I have to do is is this uh, left arm and her um, then her hands and I usually do I usually pose the hands not in T-Pose Master. I usually push the, the T-Pose back up and do it that way. Do it just in regular, the regular side. Okay, so let's see. I think I'm gonna try to do that really, really quick. For the, for the normal map, watch the Y. Oh, right, right. Uh, I actually bake my maps in Marmoset and it has a function where you can flip the Y and you can flip the X. It's really cool. Marmoset is, is the new king when it comes to normal map baking. Okay, actually I'm just gonna hide this. I'm gonna try that trick. Yeah, sweet. Man, that is cool. Maybe it's always been there, I don't know. But to me it's new, <laughs> silly. Okay, we're gonna try this out. There we go. 
It's also a matter of balance too. You gotta make sure she feels balanced and planted. Now this is giving her some some crazy hips. Move them in a little bit. Let's straighten this foot out. Yeah, there's, I don't know why there's never a standard Y up, Z up, what's up. <laughs> oh boy, that's going to be a mess. Um, what do I want to do? I'm going to auto group them. I don't care. There we go. That's what I wanted. Make sure perspective is off. Ah, uh, yeah. So see when I moved the leg back, it made it a lot higher than this other one now. So that's kind of the, now I need to figure out what I want to do. And I'll probably move the other leg forward to match it. I can also shrink this one again a little bit. Just kind of got to fudge it. Fudge it, fudge it. What did I do to my squid? <laughs> Look at my squid. I accidentally grabbed him and like warped him some... I must have masked him off somehow. <laughs> oh, that's okay. I'll bring him back. All right, you guys, settle down. <laughs> no, no, you're all getting all heated. It's fine. Honestly, I can tell you why. I can tell you why ZBrush has its own thing, and that's because when when the the the, the head programmer was working on ZBrush. In the very, very beginning, he wasn't trying to compete with anybody else. He was just having fun making his own thing. He wasn't looking at the other software. He was just going, you know what? I just want to make this thing, just this hobby thing. And I just want to make a program where you can do uh, 3D art inside of a 2D illustration program. That was the in original intention. And then it grew into something else. So when it grew, then uh, it was too late. He'd already put the stuff in how he wanted it. So that's why it's not uh, standard, if you will, which is just fine. Because ZBrush does a ton of stuff not standard. And I kind of love ZBrush for it. Yep. No being salty. <laughs> okay. That's better. So ignoring this arm that I haven't posed yet, see how that makes for a more solid pose? From all angles. It just looks better. Because she's more grounded now. Okay, so let's uh, let's pose this last arm up. Thanks, San Hordos. Thank you very much. Oh, that's not what I want to do. I want to do that. Because I need to put, move this arm back in space. Oh, just like that. Done.
you're grounded for a week yep spread spread your legs out more be more grounded Timmy <laughs> All right, back in space. Let's move them out. Move it out. Let's see. And her shoulders clear out here. Tanuki art. Oh, Lewis, thank you for very, very much for dropping by, man. <laughs> Do you stream Tanuki art? Who made the concept? This was made by Johannes Helgeson. Let me, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta find his art station. Hold on a second. You're going to be blown, prepare to be blown away. But you got to promise to come back to my stream. Yes. He, he is. <laughs> and he is amazing. Okay. What I'm doing now is I'm looking at the angle that that elbow needs to bend in order for that arm to match up with that that hip shield thing she has and then come to rest on the hip shield. So I may have to bend this elbow first and then adjust the shoulder to match. Oh, did you learn anatomy by first drawing out the concept on paper or did you practice by sculpting? Honestly, anatomy I learned by practice I'm not a very good draftsman when it comes to drawing. I'm okay. I can do it. I'm okay at it. But I don't ever work out anything first in a drawing and then go to sculpt. I always just use reference, a lot of reference, and um, I follow other people's concepts that also know anatomy. So I learn a lot through sculpting concepts of people that are very good. see prepare <laughs> prepare to be blown away yes are you guys checking that out it's so good his lighting skills are just insane insane I mean, he makes it look like it's 3d already that's why his stuff's so easy to sculpt oh hey dungeon pug is back i didn't realize it was you that said that yes perfect time has a voice I, I just said that because I, I put a link into uh, Johannes Helgeson's art, the guy who did this concept. His Go check out his art station. It's super good. You're in a weird limbo where you don't know whether to focus on 2D or 3D. I'm, I want to make 3D characters, but I also want to make my own concepts. I could just copy a sweet concept from Pinterest, but I don't want to. Have to have to... Okay, yes, you do need to make up your mind because, and I'll tell you why. If if you want to do it professionally, okay? If you want to do it just on your own, then just, just do it on your own. There are concept artists that work in 3D. There are, they exist. But if you want to be a character modeler in game development, then like my entire career of 18 years of doing this stuff, I have never sculpted my own character design. It's always been another concept artist that has done it and and made it and it's gone through the process and then I model it. That's that's what I get paid to do. So if you want to be a character artist in games, be prepared to model other people's stuff and get paid for it. If you want to design your own characters, then you should focus on 2D art and become a concept artist. So that's my advice for you. <laughs> it's so weird when Americans print. I I have no idea. I'm I know I'm destroying his name. I apologize. It's, I have no idea how to say his name. I, I was saying Joe, Johannes for the longest time. I didn't even know that you say like, yo, 
Johannes. I don't know how to say it. <laughs> I don't know. I wish I could hear it pronounced so I could pronounce it correctly. Maybe maybe I'll ask him to like record his name and then I'll pr I'll pronounce it correctly because I'm probably butchering it. Okay. There's any inherent advantage to employers to see your art station and be like, oh, he's made his own concept too. Yeah, not really. Use use Translate, like Google Translate. Does that really work? Looks like it's pretty much a 90. Let's see. Just kind of trying to get this into place here. So when I'm when I'm posing this, what I'm looking for is is that crux between the thumb and the forefinger, this this bit of skin right here, where it's going to land on on her. Because then I know I can pose all the fingers around that. That's kind of where it's going to it's going to sit and it's going to pivot right from that that spot. You've been messing with alternate ways of posing a model. Interesting. I'd love to. I'd love to check it out. She looks like she has her hand in some invisible pocket. Let's see. Interesting how how much her shoulder drops and then the arm comes out. I'm gonna. I want to try and do that. So I'm gonna mask this off more. Okay. You can also use uh, brushes like your move brush and just your smooth brush just to help because I'm losing my volumes and things like that. I can just come in here and smooth this back out, but you gotta be careful. No one cares if you can do not the part of the workflow they are paying you for at a professional level. That's true. They only wanna see that you can do what they hire you to do. That's, a, that's, that's very well put. But that being said, um, they also want to know if you can rig or animate or anything like that too. They always say that's a plus, right? And because I've, I've also animated and I've rigged and that helps with building my, my game models because then I know where things are gonna deform and I know where to put extra loops. And I also know how to, how to pose things because I, I did some animation for a while and that helps with posing. So there, there are benefits, but yeah, you're right. Companies don't usually wanna see all that extra stuff. And honestly, they don't wanna see, uh, like um, Gavin, I'm trying to remember his last name. He just barely posted an article um, talking about what, what you should put in your demo reel and you actually should not have a demo reel because a demo reel means video and it means motion. And as a character modeler, you're, nothing is in motion, so you don't need to show it in motion. You don't need to like do a slow turn with a wireframe. You don't need that stuff. Just make an art station with nice, nice pictures, nice images that show off your model and show that you can do the work. That's, that's, when, that's when you'll get noticed. My throat's kind of getting froggy tonight. Froggy. 
I'm talking a lot. You guys have good questions. <laughs> Are you going to show off good music? <laughs> oh, it's too funny. The techno beat. <laughs> look at my model. Look at my model. <laughs> Okay, I'm pretty happy with that, I think. Am I? I kind of want the elbow kicked out just a little bit more. Yeah, you don't need music. I, I'm, I'm sure he was just joking. <laughs> he, she. You always need music. Life is music. If I have someone from uni, I went... I could ask if he wanted to collaborate so I could use his concept art so it's very good to sculpt and model my characters. What's in it for him? So if you, uh, honestly, concept artists, they, they normally just want to see their concept in 3D, honestly. That's what they want because it's, it's flattering. It's flattering that, that somebody has come to them and said, you know what, I love your design, it's good enough, I wanna try and model it. Because concept artists, that is what that's what their job is, is their job is to make concept that, which is essentially a blueprint that modelers can use to model from. So they can, they can go to a company and say, hey, look, I made this concept and this guy modeled it. And if the model is good, that's essentially proving that you're a good concept artist, if that makes sense. So you are helping each other out that way. Um, and there, there are some concept artists that actually want to, to be compensated for it. But if you're not selling, if you're not selling the end result, there's not really any reason. You know, you just use your best discretion. I there, there shouldn't be because you're not making any money off of it. They're not making any money off of it. It's just, they've already drawn it. It's not really hurting them or help, you know, it's only gonna help them if you model it. It's not gonna harm them unless, unless the model you make is completely an utter crap, <laughs> you know, <laughs> then it could, I guess, because then people will search their name and if you gave them credit for the model, it'll pull up this crap. Yeah, anyway, I won't get into that right now, but it's, it's uh, that's kind of the benefits for them. Okay, I think I think I like that better. Let's look at it from all angles. Yeah, that's good. I like that. Okay, let's get the scabbard in place. Let's see. <laughs> Send you in texture as an MP4. You're you're on one, man. <laughs> okay, I suppose unless you have a badass game demo, I'll keep that. Yes. Yeah, you don't you don't need to get into any of that stuff. <laughs> Pata Patafui. That's an awesome name. Welcome to the stream. Shakira, yep. So I've been using deformers to pose with a less static. Oh, I see. I see. Is merge subtools together in a specific way so the deformer can apply on the whole selection and the results are nice. I can I totally get that. Yeah, I can I can see where that would that would work. So uh, what Tanuki's talking about is the deformers under the new gear, like the new gizmo. Let's see. So this gear right here, you can see, come on, there's a, this deformer right here. But you can't do it when the, when the mesh is partially hidden, but it will actually put, uh, it's like in Maya or 3D Studio Max, it's called an FFD or a mesh deformer. And it has these little points around a cage and you can manipulate that cage and it will manipulate everything underneath it. And that's really, that's really cool. I've seen somebody else uh, actually sculpt and push hair around like that using one of those bend deformers, the new one. So it's pretty cool. 
It's a good idea. I'm definitely more on the side of animator modeler than I am concept art because it lets concept art has the highest ceiling in the industry from what I've seen. You have to be so good just to be hired as a Photoshop guy. That is mostly true. Unless you want to do environments. Um that I don't know how true that is. Um I Paula, they you should ask every concept artist before you model their model. And the reason why is because the IP could be already have been purchased from like say Marvel or somebody. So if if you want to use it later or if it's caught up in like licensing shenanigans, you want to make sure that it's kind of available for you to model. Not that you're gonna be making any money off of it, but you also don't wanna have like say Marvel come to you and ask you to pull it because they own the licensing to it or whatever. So also it's good to call out the original concept artist as much as you possibly can because that only helps you and it helps them. Um, so I, I typically ask every single concept artist whatever art I'm using. And uh, I, I don't know how to say his name, but Johannes is super excited to have me model this. And I'm, I'm just more than excited to, to model it myself. So I, I'm, I'm like a, a kid, kid on Christmas. I can't wait to show him this finished product. So, um, and th I don't, this is not for anything in particular. This is something he just made up. So it's kind of, uh, it's kind of open and out there which is great. Okay, so I'm just going to move this into place and scale it down because it's gigantic. Whoa. Also, when you start to get a reputation as a decent character modeler. Uh, concept artists are more than happy if you come to them and you say, hey, can I model that? You know, they're they're way more willing to go, yeah, I've seen your stuff, it's awesome, please do, you know? So that's that's kind of a nice a nice benefit when you when you start getting good and well known and out there in the public. I want to stretch this. Let's see. I'm sorry if I'm missing your questions. You guys are asking a ton of aw awesome questions, but you're, they're going by pretty fast. <laughs> I'm trying to get this done. So let's see. Uh, do I, let's see. How's the best way to go from 2D to 3D modeling? wanting to transition over to modeling. So uh, just, there are several ways. Um, my friend Steve James, I don't know if he's still in the stream right now or not, but he has made several, uh, several tutorial videos for Pixelogic and they're on Ask, or not, I keep saying Ask, ask ZBrush, but they're on ZBrush Classrooms. So if you go to pixelogic.com or you can just Google ZBrush, ZBrush Classrooms, he has, uh, Z, uh, Steve James was, was and is an illustrator first, and then he is a modeler second, and he uses ZBrush, and he shows you as an illustrator how you can kind of approach learning ZBrush and getting into it. And I personally have a, a course that I've made, and it is at 3dcharacterworkshop.com. And you can go there and get on my emailing list. The course is closed for enrollment right now, but I hope to be opening it again very soon. And it's, is, it is a course that takes you from beginner level all the way through to a finished game model. And I, I go through posing and all this kind of stuff. So if you're just interested in that, you can check that out. Let's see. Uh, the <laughs> I'm not gonna answer that. Potafui. Let's see. I was trying to play with one of those bend deformers after I saw someone do amazing hair. Yeah, you probably watched that same video I did. It was really cool. Oh, you failed though. <laughs> you have to have enough points along the curve. So 
make sure you have that. Um, let's see, do you want to see what I've managed to make with the new process experiments? Um, yeah, you can, I don't know if I'll get to it. You can uh, maybe message me on Facebook or something because the, the stream will just kind of go by. Uh, but I don't want to pause for the all the watchers to wait for me to check it out. So, but yeah, you can send it to me or send it to uh, Shane.Olson at 3dcharacterworkshop.com. You can send it there and I'll, I'll get it. Uh, but I'd love to check it out. So, X Timden, Timdan, just jumped in, but I see you're using the new Gizmo. Yes. Do you like that better than the old transpose tool? Sorry if you've already mentioned this. No, that's no problem. I have talked about it and I'm loving it. It's really, it's really cool. It's a, uh, it, there's a lot of advantages to it. And I am a fan of the transpose tool, honestly. I'm a fan and I'm becoming more of a fan of this gizmo and the reason why is because it's just kind of easier to place and I'm not constantly pushing W E and R to get to move rotate and translate and I'm not or move rotate scale and I'm not um, I'm not constantly redrawing the transpose line over and over and over again like I usually do so I'm, I'm loving it so far it's really nice okay I'm just kind of looking yeah, Scandinavian. It's, uh, yep, Swedish. My last name is Swedish. So, but I'm like, I'm like fifth generation away from Sweden, so. <laughs> oh, multi-arts. Got to catch a train. Well, thank you very much for stopping by. Uh, have have a good one. Ride, ride safe. <laughs> you know how those trains can be. Okay. Bend that angle out just a little bit more. I don't want to. I don't want to put it too far out because I uh, I want to 3D print this eventually, and I don't want it hanging clear out that it's going to break off. You know, <laughs> my my own actually my my last name changed. It used to be like like Olosen or something like that like had some extra extra letters in there and they shortened it after they moved to America so so the answer to that is probably not I don't know how to say it in Scandinavian just my brutal American <laughs> let's see you can also turn off the gizmo and use the transpose tool if you want yeah that's for you you totally can do that Okay, Tanuki, that'd be great. Uh, Finnish, well, so O-L-S-E-N is Danish, and O-L-S-O-N is Swedish, I guess. That's what I've heard anyway. I don't know. That's what I've heard. And mine is O-N, by the way. to turn this just a bit just to get a little more of that sword face happening okay now I'm going to I'm going to break it I'm just going to push this whole thing over slightly like everything because I really want to push that hip out and then down. You got to be careful though because you'll you'll ruin volumes and you'll start you'll start skewing things. <laughs> you just got to be careful when you do stuff like that. Okay. Let's see. It's just a bit narrower. Okay. <laughs> what? Turn it off because the videos I haven't. Yep. 
Yep. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm growing to love the, the gizmo now for sure. The, the transpose tool was great and it still is great, but, um, yeah, I'm just getting used to the gizmo. I like it a lot. This is starting to get weird. Starting to get weird. This, uh, the shoulder, it's all broken. It's losing volume and all sorts of stuff. Let's fix it. Uh, do I always work standing up? Not always. I, I like to stream standing up. I try to stand up as much as possible because it, it, uh, it's good for you. It's sitting is horrible for you, but it's, and I have a thick mat that I stand on, um, that Matt Thorup gave me. <laughs> so, uh, that, that helps my feet a lot, but my feet still kind of get fatigued. So I just need to be careful, but I'd rather my feet than my back. So. 47 you're just two you're two years older than me oh yeah yep standing up is the best the best I just barely got this desk not too long ago because I'm uh, I'm doing my course full time now so I'm working from home full time and I'm, I'm doing some freelance from home. So this is my, this is my main workspace. So I decided I'm going to get a, a good chair that won't hurt my back and a standing desk. Cause that's much cheaper than doctor bills later <laughs> or the pain. I just don't want the pain, you know? Oh yeah, life drawing, for sure. You can walk around. Okay. I think that's as far as I'm going to take it in this in this pose uh, in this T pose ma master. Let's see. There we go. I'm going to push it back to the high resolution and I'm going to save it first. Call it pose state because it's in its pose state. It's dangerous to save it in this state because you, well, this is just the, the, the tool. It's not really, you don't have all your sub tools and everything. So, Let's see what it does. Dun, 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 dun. I like watching this, it's pretty fun. All the pieces go into each other. Fump, fump, fump. Shouldn't the sword sheath be on the other side? Uh, yes, it should be. <laughs> but unless, because it'd be like, like, mm, <laughs> right? <laughs> so it's not like crossing over the side. Yeah, I totally get that. That's a good call. But, uh, but the composition, you know, with this concept, I don't know. We'll see. I might put it over there. But see the with with this current pose, it's nice to have this shield on her right shoulder, this shield on her left hip, so it's opposite of each other. And then so like where would this go over here? You know, not over top of that. Anyway, So, oh, pro tip for cheap, fancy ergonomic chairs, Craigslist and future furniture liquidators. Oh yeah. <laughs> that's a good, that's a good point. Good tip. 
So you had a problem with this a while back with a hidden part. It meant it didn't want to transpose. I don't. I guess I don't understand what your question is. Look at this squid. Isn't he awesome? He's all. He's all horked. It's all. <laughs> that's that's perfect. Perfect. I'll just take him from another. I'll take him from another file and merge him back in before his pre-warped state. Okay, let's uh, let's start getting into the nitty-gritty and uh, let's pose her eyeballs. Get her looking forward. <laughs> Making a blend shape for the squid. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this eye, it's all stretched in the middle, broken, but we don't care. We don't care. Let's see. Because we don't see it. <laughs> it's going to look funny for a minute. Yes, I love this gizmo. Love it. Why? Because now I can look at the eye right now and I can see it. Otherwise, I'd have to rotate the camera so I'm looking down at the top of her head and just kind of guess where it's supposed to be. But now I can actually look and see it. It's nice. Nice, nice. I like it. Piano mm -hmm. keys, yep. I told you. Told you. see I spent some time going through sub tools oh yeah sometimes you know it's it's mostly like a, like layers or hidden objects or something with a that doesn't have subdivision levels subdivision levels is pretty important and make sure everything is named properly you don't want to have uh, you don't want to have bad names because everything is based off of naming when you're going back and forth so let's see now she's looking down let me put it in perspective there we go not bad okay and make did you did you put it through to uh shane dot o l s o n at 3d character workshop dot com so that's the that's what where you need to send it. Sorry if I skipped over that too fast. Uh, making a Minotaur monster guy, which is my own design, but I really need to use somebody else's concept. Yep, you should do that. I got hooked on the gizmo in ZBrush Core. Yes, waited till 4R8 to upgrade. That's probably pretty smart. Okay, let's let's give her a, an expression. Now that we have subdivision levels on her face, we can go down in subdivision levels and it's easier to give her an expression. Make sure you turn symmetry off and give her just a little bit of a tweaked up smile here. Like she, so she looks like she's up to something. She's like, I'm going to cut you. There we go. Okay, <laughs> thanks Tanuki, I'll check it out. So you'll notice I did, I did push this pose a little bit more than it is in the concept. So I pushed her hip out this direction in space further. And you also notice how, see, see this line is now not going straight down her leg. I'll have to redraw that and make it so it's straight. 
or I'll go back in and tweak it and, and re-unwrap it so it goes but that's a little more difficult than just erasing it and redrawing it so that's one thing I'll have to do and then let's uh, let's pose our hands because we have oh like 20 minutes something like that let's see uh, what was that you mentioned about the new mask by polygroup thing so honestly uh, and I don't know if it's if it's actually a new thing or if I just didn't notice it before <laughs> and I was just doing it the way I was doing it but um, typically I, th I think it might not be new I was just being dumb but typically when you have uh, the transpose tool selected and you're on an object and you want to mask it you can go down just solo this for a second you can click and drag with gizmo oops and it will mask off an appendage like this so if I have symmetry on let's do it one more time so it'll mask out a, sim uh, a thing like this and it will it will unmask this and it will mask every other subtool that I had which I was just showing a couple of them so I think it gave me a false sense of what it was actually doing. I, I think it was, I, I don't think it's anything new. I think it's been there. I just, I got excited for no reason. <laughs> so, so ignore that, forget it. I'm just being dumb. Okay, let's see. Let's, uh, let's model these, or let's pose these hands. Hands, hands. Saving, okay, there we go. Turn off symmetry down in subdivision levels and I replaced these hands with some hands that I had before kind of cheated Shh, don't tell anybody these are because those hands that I had before they were just looking horrible I didn't even want to look at them so I didn't want to try and fix the ones I had I, I honestly I really like the gizmo because I can just hold down alt and I can just tap where I want the gizmo to be and it's just there you know okay I think I need to <laughs> yeah if you have a uh, panda no, no worries let's see they actually go farther up in okay so let's see I need to move this over I'm gonna break it for a minute so I'm kinda gonna put the hands where I I want them to be and then I'll fix the wrist that's going up into that uh, bracer that's a nice thing about having bracers on on your character is that the wrist is broken up underneath the bracer typically so you can move it around separately and you can twist it without like tying things in knots up underneath there so that's why it's separate cheat cheating okay and this this octopus face I gotta put her thumb around that It's going to be kind of hard. Let's see. It's kind of cool to have one. It looks like she has one finger kind of up and around, and then the other three down. So that's kind of nice. Gosh, my camera's going bonkers tonight. What's going on? Stop it. Hmm. Sometimes it's a puzzle. Sometimes I find this gizmo does get in the way, some of it, sometimes. 
I actually tried to make a minimalist gizmo. So let me show you guys what I made. Let's see if it's still in the rotation here. So preferences, gizmo, 3D, and you just hit next gizmo. And it'll kind of go cycle through all these gizmos. Oh, and this is this is one I made. I was trying to get minimalistic with it. So it's not in, in the way so much. So I made this square be move, move on plane, and I made these arrows be rotate on plane. And then I just made all these parts smaller. But I made rotate be these little guys. And I don't like this rotate as much as I like the standard with the little ring rotate. So I might I might put those back in, but I don't know if it's worth it. It's it's so close to the original one that uh I just I just use the default one. Let's go back. There's so many. Okay, we're back. Okay, move this out of the way. Hmm. <laughs> that's that's looking too crazy, I think. I might move that squid eye out of the way or something. Octopus, I don't know what it is. Or make the finger go up and over it. Maybe I'll do that. That seems like most likely, right? Might look weird though. It's kind of trippy. <laughs> it's like, look, look at this eye. Look at it. <laughs> Let's see. What are you talking about? Oh yeah, she's fun. I don't know if I've ever seen her modeled before. Yeah, that'd be. She'd be really fun first one I kind of like this pose I'm not gonna lie I don't know why I'm gonna leave it leave it with the it's like look at look at the eye clear in the way. Let's see if I can fix it. I'll have to decide if that's <laughs> if I if I like that hand pose or not. Kind of funky, but whatever. Do we care? So for 3D printing, you don't want to have any gaps between things if you can help it.
Okay. Let's do let's let's pose this other hand now. And typically on a sword or something with a handle, I'll line up those first knuckles. And then, then they'll just naturally fold across. <laughs> he he knows he knows that I'm modeling this and he's he's seen it in in various different states. So uh yeah, but yeah, that's a good idea. It's like, hey look what I did. <laughs> Check it out. Oh, so, uh, hey Blands, what is meant by a watertight model? That means um, like no, no gaps. It essentially means no gaps. So, and the, the live Boolean stuff really helps you see if there's gonna be any gaps. So at the end, when you're all done, um, when you're all done modeling, what you do is you, you, you branch off again and you use Dynamesh and you Dynamesh everything together and then it all becomes one big mass quote-unquote watertight model so but if you have any gaps like say like up underneath this collar you can see one see see that little gap right there you want to bring those two things together so they touch otherwise that gap could actually cause like a leak like a literal leak and make a hole like a big cavity inside of her body. So you need to be careful and close all of those gaps under every single thing because then it, when it prints, it'll print, it'll print good, it'll print nice. And then, uh, then, then you can go in and you can make all your keys. Uh, so you can, that's when you cut it up and you make like tabs that go, you know, tab A into slot B or whatever, that kind of stuff. Those are keys, so I know I shouldn't have shown him anything. Well, I had to ask him if I could do it, so you know, and he actually like s called out that I was modeling it, so nobody else could model it because I was gonna do it. So that was pretty cool of him. <laughs> it's like, don't any, nobody model this? Shane's gonna do it because a lot of modelers will model his stuff because he is so good at volumes, which makes which makes his designs very very appealing to character modelers because the the blueprints are there it's it's easy easier to model his stuff because there's no question what the thing's doing right okay I'm getting sidetracked I'm putting elbows on her elbows oh I noticed something else too this vest is not there you go Okay, I'm gonna hide the squid. Drive me crazy. It's all looks like you got hit by a truck. <laughs> so, okay, what? Yes, yes, it is considered watertight if all of those cavities are closed off. You know, if there's a big giant like cavity inside there then it's not watertight. It has to be like closed. So if there's just a cylinder in there and it has like gaps in the back, then you know it needs yeah, it needs to be it needs to be fixed. Okay. Were you quizzing me? <laughs> You're quizzing me? I don't know what I'm talking about. Okay. Let's save this. <laughs> you totally know it. Yes. I I know it too, dearly. 
I worked on Disney Infinity making those little toys. So we, we made a whole bunch of them. So we had, we had to learn on the job what all that meant. Watertight. Okay, I'm going to bend all these fingers at once. Sometimes this works, sometimes not. So I'll cheat this, I'll go in here and I'll bend it and then I'll go back in with the move brush and bring them back out so the knuckles are not broken. Do employers want T-post figures for the reel or can we just sculpt them posed like you're doing now? Honestly, I would pose every single character that you do. Why? Because it's more appealing. If, I mean, you do you like looking at T-pose characters more than, than pose characters? No. And either do art directors. Like, we would, for Disney Infinity, we would do T-pose characters, and we'd have the art directors and come over and look at it, and they would have a hard time passing it to the next level. But as soon as you pose your character and they can see it and they can see the emotion and what that character really is, then all of a sudden they can visualize that character and they can visualize it, visualize it in the game. So we would try and get our characters to pose as quickly as possible because it just makes for a better model. So my advice would be to pose every single character that you have. even if you're not going to use it for anything other than just render, you know. And then I, you can you can also make the game model and pose that. That's that's what I would do is pose the game model. I'm posing a high res right now. This is not a game model. But for a portfolio, that's what I would do. Let's see, a pose for production and a pose to show it off, right. So if, okay, so if I was gonna make this into a game resolution mesh, what I would do now that I've posed it, because when you pose a character, you also find a lot of, a lot of new things that you didn't recognize when it was a T-pose, like, like I said before, you I, I made the head a lot bigger and I made the scabbard, the sword scabbard, a lot smaller. And those things I will need to reintroduce back into the neutral pose. And then you make a game character based off that neutral pose. Then for your portfolio, later on, you can pose your game resolution mesh. And you can you could rig it up in Maya and pose it that way too. You don't have to pose it in ZBrush. Okay, so now I'm going to pose these fingers one by one. But a rookie mistake with fingers is people leave them apart. When they're in a fist, there's no air in between your fingers. Beyond, you know, unless you're trying to, they're usually together. So put them together, you know, even if it means inflate them. Should have moved that one first. So, am I going to dynamesh this after the pose is done? Uh, yes, I'm going to dynamesh it eventually to print it. But I won't, I won't leave it dynameshed in this file. I'll use this file to render it. Like I'll probably push it over to Keyshot and render it. And I, I won't render a dynamesh. I only use dynamesh to print it on a 3D printer.
let's see. I prefer having it in A or T pose, but I think. What do you? Uh, <laughs> yeah, T pose. It's it's just a neutral pose, and yes, I keep it in an A pose, not a T pose. T pose is old old school. Um, I, I prefer to say neutral pose, but I, I say T pose just because that's what I've always said. So I hope you know what I mean by T pose. It's my old school vocabulary. Yeah, most people still call it a pose. Turquoise Jeep pose. <laughs> That's a good one. It's printed on a 3D printer. Are you sure you don't want to use a 2D printer? <laughs> yes. This is pretty, it gets pretty painstaking to do this, but it's kind of fun. And it's 11 o'clock. I know, flipping the bird. <laughs> you guys, and you're getting all salty again over programs. Jeez, chillax. <laughs> what about true space? True space is the best. You guys all suck. <laughs> Bryce. Use Bryce. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, <laughs> dude, light, light wave. That's a good one. There we go with the fingers, topological. So you have these fingers all kind of pointing inwards. That That's another, um, that's kind of a rookie mistake when people are posing hands. They'll just keep them all parallel to each other. Fingers don't do that. They, they kind of group together and kind of point all in one direction and they're all tight, especially when they're gripping something like a sword, so. So don't do that. Don't make them all parallel. I told you. Almost done here. Gosh, come on camera, stop popping. What do I just do? All right. <laughs> Print shop deluxe. Oh man. <laughs> when you dynamesh this, are you gonna dynamesh at high enough resolution so you have no cleanup? Or will there always be cleanup? Um, that is a good question. I have an entire process that I go through with Dynamesh and, and projecting an old Dynamesh onto a new one. I used a plugin that Joseph Drust and another guy made called Dynamesh Master because it's very stable. And it does a very good job at keeping all the details. And uh, anyway, I have a whole process that I go through to, to, to make that work. Um, the printers usually cause these the lines that you need to clean up and with the supports that you need to clean up, not necessarily Dynamesh. The, the artifacts left over from Dynamesh are so small that you hardly ever see them in the 3D print. So 
So you just picked up a cup and looked at me. <laughs> Pooping out loud. <laughs> the best name ever. Not sure if it's normal, but I noticed my pointer finger was... <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's that, that actually happens a lot. Like a, a pose like this, or a pose like this, or even split. They're, you know, the Disney animators would do that a lot just for sheer interest. It's kind of boring just to have all fingers together like that. You know, a lot of times... And we would we would actually when we we had our characters gripping something we would pop that first knuckle up. Uh, if, look at look at some of your if you have Disney Infinity figures or if you've seen them, some of their knuckles are popped up like this when they're holding something, and it's just to add interest and change the silhouette just a little bit. So. Let's see. Have you tried? Let's see. Not sure it's normal, but I notice. Okay, have you tried booing everything together with four or eight? I find it cuts out the reproduction work. Oh, reprojection. Oh, I don't know. Like with the new live boolean stuff. That's uh, that's an interesting idea. Hmm. I'll have to give that a whirl. I would definitely have to try that. So, um, for the most part, she is posed. Um, I'm pretty happy with how she turned out. I need to add some weight to her hair to bring it kind of back down. Since I've tilted her head, her hair is kind of floating in space unnaturally. Um, so I'm gonna go through and do that. And then I'm going to straighten up these lines on her chaps that I bent. And I'm just gonna go through and kind of clean her up a little bit here and there. And maybe maybe push some more you know, see what I can do. But for the most part, that's that's kind of how you pose a character. Just kind of work your way through. Like I, like I showed you, it's like a tree. I, I work from the stump, which is her hips, and then down the roots first, which is her, 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 like her legs, and then up the trunk, which is her torso, out the branches, and then finally to the leaves. So like I just barely pose the leaves, which are her fingers. So that's kind of, uh, that's kind of where we're at. And I think I'm done with streaming this girl. So uh, watch for her to pop up soon on ArtStation, on my ArtStation, and uh, maybe Zebra Central, stuff like that. So um, thank you everybody for joining me on the stream tonight. I'm going to wrap it up. And uh, thank you Pixelogic for having me. And if you are interested in any of my brushes down here, you can go to 3dcharacterworkshop.com and I offer them up for free. And along with my user interface, my user interface for ZBrush 4R8 is coming out soon, and that is this one right here. I'm just trying to work out one little bug with Pixelogic. It gives me an error when I load it up, so I'm working that out. But as soon as I, I get that worked out, I will we'll put it up on my website for free download. And, um, and also my ruler file. So you'll notice in here I have this ruler. And this ruler helps with exporting for 3D printing and it also helps going back and forth between Maya. I also give that away. So if you're interested and in, you will also get on my newsletter which will let you know I have a course that I teach. I have currently I have 170 students in there and they're doing phenomenal work. I can't wait to show you guys what they're doing and um, I it's close for enrollment right now but I will be opening it back up uh, hopefully pretty soon. So be watching out for that. And then it sounds like I will also be doing a workshop at the ZBrush Summit this year. I'm super excited about that. So it hasn't been announced yet, my, my workshop, but if you watch the Pixelogic ZBrush Summit page, you'll, you'll see it when they post it. So uh, I, I, it, um, I hope some of you guys can show up to that. That'd be really cool. Anyway, um, Let's see, I don't know what the, the total scope time is for this. I think I've been doing three three hour sculpts and this is number 11. So 11 times three, whatever that is. And that's, that's about how long this one took me, but I talk a lot while I'm doing it. So typically a character will take me anywhere between two to four weeks to do. And that includes the game mesh, the game model, so. Anyway, yeah, thank you very much for showing up, guys. Um, I appreciate it. And I will be here again next Tuesday, same time. Also, 
there are a lot of Pixelogic streamers that stream on this channel and they're all phenomenal. I, I recommend uh, Brendan Benzing, Bezing, uh, I'm gonna, I can't say names, Benzington, <laughs> I'm sorry Brendan, and uh, A Cubed, who's Ashley, she's another one that's awesome, and uh, there's like, there's Robert and Tim, there's all, there's a ton of them. Just look at the schedule when there's nobody streaming, you can see when new people are coming up all the time. So anyway, it's been fantastic. Thanks everybody, have a good night, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care, good night.